um welcome to a next tutorial our tutorial um is centrally focused on access the internet now from time to time i know that persons would have been using the internet whether from their desktop computer laptop or even your smartphone now we tend to use the internet for various reasons and um maybe do not know the correct procedure or what we're actually doing in terms of what happening in the back end of things now for this tutorial um i'm just going to go through it and to basically bring some of those information to light i am trying to get this um tutorial around a half an hour just to let it be, um, not be too long so the first thing we're going to look at as it relates to access the internet is the element one, which is to identify and start up install internet software. So first you have to identify, know your internet software and you have to know how to start them up. Now, what are the software that you use as it relates to the internet if you want to access the internet what are some of the softwares that you would use well some person would say that you would use like firefox and uh, chrome all of those good um now there are specific terms to refer to those softwares those softwares um those are known as your browser good because if you want to go on the internet and take for example if you don't have a software like your um firefox or your opera or even your chrome you will not be able to access the internet so first and foremost when you need to access the internet you need a browser such as a firefox and so on but let's get um a little bit more in depth starting the internet and here we have a keyword modem short for modulator and demodulator now and it's saying that a modem is a device or program that enables a computer to transmit data for example over telephone or cable line now you know that when you apply for your internet service from flow or even digital they will give you a modem because without a modem you won't be able to access the internet that is number one that is very keen all right so i want you to bear that in mind and just to furnish a little bit more as related to the internet they're saying that here the internet is the world's largest network that links millions of business government agencies educational institutions and individual and i think that is self-explanatory because businesses have used the internet to conduct conduct um their various transaction um even education system and so on the, in today's 21st century it is the number one way in which we are able to communicate is via the internet all right, so I'm just going to touch on the key areas and um, give you explanation as it relates to it. Now we say that the internet is accessible to anyone with access to a computer and a modem. As explained before, if you have a modem, you have access to the internet, but you would also need your computer or your smart device to do so. The internet carries the following features. Features such as the world's largest information network. First and foremost, if you want to figure out something, you will go and search the internet. That is the first thing that will come to mind. Person nowadays don't even think about okay, let's just go to the library and use a book. The first thing, let's go to the internet and get this information. Next, global web of computer network. There's a giant link of network um, of computers using the internet internet network for many networks all running the um tcp ip a combination of two protocol 
that mediate all communication over the internet. So the P as they suggesting um the, the TCP, your telecommunication protocol, and you have your IP, which is a next protocol that both work together to enable you that um, level of connection. And in the word protocol there will um stand for rules, set of rules that would have governed how that um internetworking is done. The final one is powerful communication tools. There is a wide variety of tools that you can use to communicate using the internet. Numerous amount of tools. Now we have accessing the internet. You can access the internet for various for a variety of reasons. You can access the internet. In other words, what do you use the internet to do? When you access the internet, what are the things that you do on the internet? Yes, you can send messages, you can access a wealth of information, which was mentioned earlier. You can do your shopping, that is your e-commerce and so on. You can um, meet and converse with people and they have various platforms like your WhatsApp, Facebook, um, Instagram, all of those um, platforms, as well as for entertainment. You can watch your movies, you can go on YouTube, you can do all of those stuff on the internet. So generally, do I think that person access the internet for? Now, when we talk about email, and by the way, the word e in email stands for electronic mail, as it is as it is stated here. That email is the abbreviation for electronic mail. It is the most common form of online communication and is readily available to any anyone with connection to the internet. And from time to time, persons in this lesson, you will be sending me email and so on. Next, an ex um, term as, as, it, as it relates to the internet is like your telnet. And they say telnet provides the capability to log into a remote computer and to be able to work interactively with it. So with a telnet, it enables you to log into a remote computer. Computer can be at a different location from where you are, but with the proper login, you can log into that computer and you can um, do or carry out various tasks on that computer. All right, um, this is a protocol as well as it relates, and this one is linked to sending of information here FTP, we stand for File Transfer Protocol, and it's saying that File Transfer Protocol, and please remember, as I mentioned earlier, the protocol it refers to set of rules. So therefore, when you see a tra file transfer protocol, it's generally saying that it is um, a set of rules that is governed how file is transferred. But just let's read it for further explanation. So FTP is a method that allows you to move file and data from one computer to another. FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, most commonly FTP enables only teachers to receive, for example, for example, enable only teachers to receive lesson plan, magazine, books, document, free software, music, and graphics. So therefore, it will be like a protocol that is got to um, govern only take teachers to receive certain things, all right? But in general, once you're sending a file, it basically govern or it's the rule that govern how it is sent and who it is sent to, ensure it is sent to the intended person. Now, from time to time, you, have been, you see the word double, double, double dot. Most time when you're entering, you're entering your URL to go on a particular website. Now, that double W, that triple W stands for worldwide web the incredibly huge collection of specially formatted document and um, they're saying that that supports link to other documents as well as graphics audio video files so www.worldwideweb it gives you that breakout connection that um give you links to go to, to find documents, to find graphics, to find audio, to find video, all those files, right? And um, 
you might be seeing here um, in bracket to say formatted in the in a markup language called HTML, which is hypertext markup language. Um, it is a form of web web um, web language that you basically use to create like website and so on, which we will be using throughout this course. And they say we um you need the following very important you need the following for internet access. If you are going to access the internet, one you would need a computer. Two you would need a modem. You would need communication software. And and you would also need an ISP, which stands for Internet Service Provider, such as your digital and your flow. Because despite you have a computer, you have a modem, and you have necessary software, if you do not have an internet provider to give you the access, you will not be able to access the internet. So if you are asked for um for an for an example of an ISP, which is for it just stands for Internet Service Provider, you can always say. In our region here, it is digital and, and um, flow in general. Now you might wonder to yourself how the internet works. Let's look at an overview of that, please. Information sent over the internet travels by networks, which we did mention the, um, the term network earlier, and it's basically give us a connection of like um, various electronic devices and it enables to like send information and use resources. So internet travel by networks and communication channels owned by owned and operate by many companies. Home or small business users often connect to the internet through a dial-up access, which to uh, which in general these have been changing over the over the over the past couple of years. So you know that technology is always upgrading, always moving. So those stuff are always being changed. All right. To a dial-up access, um, with dial-up access, you can use either a computer or a modem and a regular telephone line to dial up into a internet service provider or online provider. And um, here they are giving you an example of where you would type in a URL address. I mentioned URL earlier when I talk about double double dot. And right here you are seeing HTTP and you're seeing your double double dot yahoo.com and that will basically bring up the Yahoo page that you are seeing right here. And that takes us to um identifying install internet software so um yahoo would have been i'm sorry um like chrome and all those would be um internet software that is basically installed now we have to open up chrome and all of those so in this case here we have a microsoft internet explorer right here you have to open microsoft internet explorer and then you type in the url for yahoo in order to bring up that page so it um, explained further to say accessing information on the internet, also known as surfing the internet. So when you go on the internet and you're looking for stuff and, and you move from one page to another, it is referred to as surfing the internet. All right, I did mention web browser initially when I started this tutorial, and here you see a web browser. Um, basically, generally, um, software that interprets HTML, one of the language used to code web page and text. So when you open your web browser, it basically um, interprets your TRL and basically give you access um, to the internet. So you can do various things, whether you want to watch a movie, if you want to search for information, and so on. Among the many internet browsers available, the two most popular ones are, well, these are these used to be the most two popular ones. But now the general most popular one is your Firefox and your Chrome. However, Netscape Navigator now, now, now used to be one of those back in the days, as well as your 
Microsoft Internet Explorer. And here, um, just to give you a little backdrop, they give you some uh, information on Netscape Navigator, also some information on your Internet Explorer. But like I said, that um, these two internet browsers are hardly used these days. The most two common ones, they are your um, Firefox and your Chrome. All right, the web and the internet. The term web and the internet are often used interchangeably. However, they are not um, synonymous. The World Wide Web is a collection of standards and protocols used to access information available on the internet. So therefore, you use the World Wide Web, which have its standards and its protocol that foster you or help you to access information on the internet. The internet is a network used to transport information the web uses three standards, and let me reinforce this. The web uses three standards. One, URL, which stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Your HTTP, which is your Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And if you realize, each time you type in your URL, you always see your HTTP at the front. And the next standard, is your HTML and this is the language that is used to create your web pages and HTTP stands for hypertext markup language so remember that um, the web uses three standards your URL your HTTP and your HTML and here you see where um, URL is explained further but let's just look at that briefly where they say URLs are a standard for locating internet documents. So if you just like it's a uniform resource locator and uniform means it's set in a certain way and it enables you to um, locate resources and so on. All right, let's look at this part. There's, um, URL specify three specific, three, sorry, URL specify three pieces of information needed to retrieve a document. One, the protocol to be used, the server address and port to which to connect to, and the part of the information. So when you're using your URL and you're locating like or retrieving information, these three things are taken into consideration or these three, three things must be in place for that to happen. Uh, we did speak about um, HTTP already and um, we say that HTTP is a protocol once you're seeing the word P, most 95% of the time once you're seeing the word P in a term it's related to the internet, in most cases it, it represents protocol. So here HTTP is a protocol used to transfer information within the World Wide Web. Web document beginning begin with the HTT protocol, and here you see it again. As I mentioned, in most cases, cases when you type in your URL, you're going to see your HTTP be at the front right there. Okay, we explain HTML already as a programming language used to create web pages, and that is what we will be using more, um, for about um, eighty percent or ninety percent of this course to develop our web. Uh, website and so on. All right, and um, let's let's do an overview of this. Starting, starting the installed internet software. Um, now that you know how to identify and install internet software, it is time to start the program. All right, so before you end, um. This will be like installing, take for example, like a Firefox or like your Chrome, and um, you will see the icon on the desktop like we have seen earlier with Netscape and um, Internet Explorer. And 
it is basically telling you that you will see the icon on the desktop and you can double click to open that particular browser. All right, so um, this term cyberspace, you probably have seen um, the term cyberspace already and um, a metaphor for describing a non-physical terrain created by computer system. I talk about cyberspace. Um, you are actually in, uh, as you mentioned here, a non-physical space that you are actually using. Once, and you know, cyber speaks to like the internet and so on. So entering that um, internet space, which is a non-physical one, it is um, classified as cyber space. Unlike real space though, exploring cyberspace does not require any physical movement other than pressing keys on the keyboard or removing a mouse. Yes, as I was explaining just now. All right, let me just go on this part right here. All right, so as it relates to um website and web page and so on, you will come across term like your website. What is a website? A website um a web a site website a site on the World Wide Web. So once you go on the World Wide Web, and you type in even a search for something, and you click on that link, and it open a, a page, and you you can move from one page to another. It is called a website. And um, let me explain web page so I can bring further clarity to website. You're saying here that a web page is a document on the World Wide Web. So a single document on the web is a web page. But when you have like more than one pages coming together, that can form a website. All right. And it is also located on the World Wide Web as well. All right, and this is just um, a general overview of how you would like access website and you can download file. And it is similar, um, let me break it down for you in a similar and probably a more easily understand way. When you go on even on um, Play Store, you go on Play Store, you go on a site and you can, so that's you accessing a website. And um, when you download like an app and so on, that's like you downloading like an app or if you want to download like, a file or so on. So when you talk about access the web and download file, that is what they're generally talking about. And we did mention about installing software earlier. When you go to on a website, for example, I'm going to use the same example again, um, Play Store and you download an app and you install it, it is the same procedure they're talking about and it relates to um, downloading and installing software. So in general, how do you go on the internet? How do you um search for your file, find your file, and how do you download your file and you'd have downloaded it and you'd have um, installed it on your phone. All right, so in most cases, a person will basically use your phone, but um, the procedure is same or similar using a computer. When we talk about download file, what is, what is download really? Download process of copying a file to your computer from a remote site. So you go on a site and you say, okay, well, I like this file, I like this app and the app is free. And you um, click on download, that is you. That is you are a process copying that file from a reload, from, from a remote site onto your computer or the word computer there can also refer to as your phone as well. So that is what download would generally refers to. All right, and you might see when you are downloading file, they tend to have like a virus scan because sometimes these files that you download, they are dangerous for your device, meaning they can have virus on them. So in most cases, especially when you're using, for example, like your email and you're downloading a file, it tend to give you a, a virus scan. Some computers is very fast and it do it so quickly, probably you don't even realize that 
it was actually done. But once uh, you're done with downloading something like a file from an email, for example, it always gives you a virus scan. And if there's a virus, it will identify it for you or inform you of that or tell you that the file can be dangerous. Virus. A virus, a set of executable destructive programs or instruction designed to infect other programs and database. So once you download a file and the file is a virus, it can bring some level of destruction to your program or the information you have stored on your device, whether it be a computer, desktop, a phone, any form of electronic device. It can cause um, harm. Now, how do you fight against a virus just in case if one should come on here or try to access your computer? We have what we call like antivirus software. So antivirus software are, will be software that fight against or try to stop virus from accessing or replicating itself on your electronic device. So you know that you should always um and the next thing as well um as and here we go it bounces up bounces up and that um and this free and this um phrase of email and viruses and I was mentioning earlier that uh, from time to time you will see once you're downloading something you would um a virus scan is done and I was going to furnish that to see as well if you see a suspicious let's take for example email that you don't know who it's coming from, um, it is best it is best for you to it is best for you to um not open that email if it's a suspicious one because from time to time you might open an email and it is um some form of virus that you open. So it's best for you to know who is coming from for you to um or before you open it. Now, um, terms and services. Um, terms and services. Okay, you know, once you link with an ISP, and here is a term again, ISP, and it stands for Internet Service Provider. There is always, always some terms and conditions when you are going to apply for your ISP account. So in other words, restrictions that applies to ISP accounts that, that is when you like you go to flow and you will sign contract with flow and there are some do's and don'ts and those agreements all right here we are coming across a key term again software piracy and it is um clearly stating that software piracy will full reproduction or distribution of one or more copy of one or more copyright work copyright rated works that collectively have a total retail value of more than us one thousand dollars so um piracy come from the um legal copying and distribution of softwares and so on so it is saying that um in most cases you are not able or you should not be should not be um copyrighting certain amount of software passing certain amount of value but we could link the word or we mostly come across the word um piracy and describe it to be or explain it to be which is correct when you say it is illegal and distribution of software all right, and there are various reasons why persons would have carried out such illegal activity. But this is just to say there are rules and regulation against doing such, and you can be fined significantly if proven guilty of carrying out such actions. And this would have taken us to the copyright law, and copyright laws exist to protect the creative and economic interests of writers musicians and actresses and you um probably from time to time and they would say even when persons play music they should make the disclaimer that um the music they play they may not have the right to um distribute it and so on so there are rules once you create a particular 
document, whether it be music or writing, once, once it is original and it is copyright and somebody use it without permission or make a clear disclaimer that the music they're playing is not theirs, um, you can be fined significantly for it as well. So if you should um, produce or create some form of work, um, bear in mind bear in mind that you can copyright it to protect your work all right and even like web page and all those all those stuff can be copyrighted as well and here you're saying that i'm protected by copyright web pages are also copyright and subjected to copyright restrictions and secondly they say the copyright law regardless of whether or not they contain copyright notices protects all work so even if you don't necessarily see a copyright um sign on a particular document when it's the first original work um they are to some extent protected so you should not um take somebody else's work and reproduce and put it out to make it seems that it is yours that is um an illegal action and here we even come across come across pornography um search engine makes finding adult content online easy and also sort of characters can be found in chat room devoted to pornography you know and you don't know that certain content should not um be accessible by um certain age um once a, uh, a children is like under age and so on they wouldn't be able to access certain files that easily such as pornography and there are some sites that they would ask you like um your age and so on before making you or giving you access to it all right um i realize we're at the half an hour mark but let us just get an overview of identify and use remote resources and just an overview of what that is all about accessing file and document on the internet using search engine this is generally how you go about going on the internet and searching for information and um there are many search engines available but for them searching differently and none of them searching searches the entire world of web for basic type of search engine are so you have different type of search engine but they would give you different search this and what you're searching for so four basic types of search engine would be like your directory search engine you have like your robot search engine you have like your spider search engine and you have your meta search engine and i will be asking you um in a class activity to distinguish between these types of search engine i'm just going to reinforce again four basic types of search engine they would be like your directory your robot your spider and your meta so those are four different types of search engine that you will um Come into okay well uh, yes there would be a, um, a discussion for you to distinguish and these notes i'm going through is also posted in schoology as well so you can give your explanation and your understanding as it relates to those four types of search engines All right, so we, we did mention and did um, a brief overview of browsing. And we're going to look at the link a little, bit, a little bit more because as you release a creating web page, you have to, and it's a must, that you'll be using links or link, same thing as hyperlink. So um, browsing, browse the internet to find related site via links. Browsing is generally... um. The process of reading web pages and, traver and traversing links to move to more web pages. So basically, 
moving from one pit web page to another is basically browsing and how do you, what enables us to move from one web page to another is what we call link same thing as hyperlink so it's a link in hypertext systems such as the World Wide Web so you define links in the World Wide Web refers to another document so you know click on a link it takes you from one document to another document so that's why they use the term refers to another document all right so um that would take us actually to the end of this tutorial so uh we will move on to the next unit where we will discuss how we basically retrieve access and retrieve information from our email and so on all right so i am going to share this tutorial on the youtube link as well as in schoology complemented by further information as it relates to accessing the internet.